I've been hands-on with Loot Debt CT for about a month now, and it's it is nice. It is very nice. <laughs> on first, on first appearances, you may think this is just like a stream deck with extra knobs and dials and very nice and clicky button, but it's just, it can do so much, so much more. So much more than I first expected anyway. Just because of its integration with so many softwares, notably like Adobe stuff and other creative softwares, you can, you can do a lot with it. You can do a lot with it. For full transparency, Loop Deck did send me this for free after I sent them a bunch of memes on Twitter. Um, <laughs> But but they haven't had to pre-approve this video before it goes out, so it's all it's all honest it's all honest thoughts. I was thinking of doing some sort of overview of the hardware and, and the sort of general software, but I think what will be more useful and more interesting is for me to sort of showcase how I've customized this uh, over the months to suit my personal workflow because it can it can basically do anything you want it to do. If you think it can hopefully maybe do the thing, it can probably maybe do the thing. Okay, I know there are a lot of softwares that this supports that I don't use, but I've primarily been using it with Photoshop and Premiere Pro. The first the first thing that this loop that does well above like a macro pad or, or just using key bindings is being able to adjust like brush settings with those dials. But previously where I'd be doing big steps on my keyboard with the key bindings, change the brush size, where it'd be, oh, it's too big, oh, it's too small. Now just being able to have my hand on this dial and, and sort of twist a little notch at a time to, to get the right size, it's it's so handy. It's, it's so handy. But yeah, primarily in Photoshop, most things do have keyboard shortcuts, but I'm dumb. I can't remember all these shortcuts. There's There's too many. One one thing I've set up recently is setting up um, like selection modifiers, being able to expand and shrink, feather my selection with buttons rather than having to remember oh what what shortcut did I having those on buttons and just being able to click and glance, so much so much easier. And also the funny thing about Photoshop, I found features that I didn't know were in Photoshop through setting up Loop Deck software. There's a link function in Photoshop. I didn't know that was an option. I didn't realize you could link layers together. Even if they're not in a group, you can link them. So if you move one, it moves them all. I, I can't believe I didn't know that was a feature. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Premiere Pro is a, is a different beast because I've been editing for like over a decade and I've got my hotkeys set up perfect for how I like to edit. That said, I have actually used the Loop Deck for Premiere Pro as well. Not for major stuff. You can get it to, you know, do all the cutting and selecting tools and all that if you need it to. If you want it to, you can. But I'm not going, I'm not going to force against 10 years of muscle memory, but I have used a couple buttons for a couple things that I need to use occasionally, but not that frequently. But where the Loop Deck really comes into its own in, in Premiere Pro is with color grading. <sighs> It's good. It is good. Being able to adjust all these dials to various settings. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna walk you through my process. Alright, Premiere. Um, first off we can scrub through and find find the frame to grade. Uh, may as well get one with the loop deck in it. I'll hop over to my color grading profile. Pretty handy. Uh, dials for, for literally everything. Co contrast, sh sh shadows. Highlights, whites, ex exposure, it's all there. And I press them in and I can reset them all. What I've got set up is I've got these buttons to switch between exposure controls and then sort of color color controls. So I can I can set my white bands, which is already fine because I, I set it for filming. But this little knob here, I can just quickly put in one of my LUTs. I'm just, I'm just gonna put in a um, balance LUT. Gonna dial it down a tad. Uh, yeah, that looks okay. Head back over to exposure. Uh, brighten up a tiny bit overall. Bring down the shadows. And already, it's looking all right. It's looking all white. Yeah, just a little bit of saturation and less vibrance. And just being able to quickly, down to look at dials, down to look at this menu on the side. I can, I can adjust to, to how I, how I think is right. It's pretty good for a couple minutes. 
Not even that. Not even that. Streaming software support is is something this boy does does very very well. I mean, also like they also do a cheaper model than the CT, where it doesn't have this bottom panel. It's called the Loop Deck Live. It's it's half the price. It's a steal. You should get one. But let me tell you why. <laughs> Imagine you have your, your standard macro pad, reprogrammable macro pad, and then you also have a mixer, and you merge those two together into one unit, plus a ton of other stuff. It's just, it's insane. It's insane how good this thing is. Okay, so this is all like the streamer, the streamer setup. On, on my dials, I've got volume control. This is all done through voice meets. You can see the overlays changing. It, it's, it's pretty, pretty, pretty swish. And I, if I bop them in, it resets it back to zero. And on this big wheel, I've got my master volume uh, just for headphone playback, uh, for my own monitoring, how loud I want it. But then in, into OBS, obviously I've got all these scenes set up. I'm gonna switch between them all very, very easily, just, just tapping them. You can also do more complex things. So so I've got a little macro on, on one of these buttons where if I press it, turns off my camera and uh, loads up my, my animated character in case, in case I don't want camera on first day. Um, can turn that back off, and then you know with stream and bot integration, I, I've got a few buttons here. I can I can slap myself in the in the face. I can, I can it's very versatile, very versatile of, of what you can do. So it's pretty it's pretty good. Now the previous two sections are are the the selling points of the loop deck. And general reuse, you're not going to buy this for general use, but it's nice to have these sort of extra quality of life things which you can use it for, for times where you're not doing creative work and you're not streaming. Notably for me is the always on top feature. I've got a button so I can click always on top. You select a window and it's always on top of everything. It's great if you, especially if you've only got the one monitor or if you've got too much stuff on and you're watching a video, be able to hit always on top on that video source and get on with it, whatever you're doing and it's not going to be blocked by moving windows about. I also have like one the, the physical button, the physical button E as a mute button for Discord. And then when I press the function button and then press E, it deafens me. I guess, I guess lastly, you can very simply just launch programs or certain web pages if you want. Or more importantly, if I swipe over onto my second page, got a picture of picture of more, and I can, I can, I can just, I can just open that. I can just open that as as many times as I as I as I want, I mean, as many times as I need. Really, I can just, I, I can just keep, I can just, I can just keep 